Um, so I'd, I want to take a minute to talk uh, about the gap between um, what liberals and Democrats think that they know, or at least el elite liberals and the Democrats that are the Democrats in power in the government think that they know and, and what they think about themselves and compare that to what they actually know, or rather, or more importantly, what they don't know, or they don't even know that they don't know because they're in such a echo chamber of self-reinforcing you know, pat on the backery that they uh, don't get a perspective of how the world actually works and how ridiculous the uh, the policy solutions they're implementing actually are. And so they think they're the smartest people in the room. And they have a lot of evidence for this because they have the highest grades in high school. They were surrounded by the smartest people in the uh, suburbs which they grew up in. They were surrounded by, you know, wealthy professional elites who rose to the top of their field through the meritocratic American ideal of uh, intellectuals uh, running society, which is again what they think that uh, we should be doing right now, which is pretty self-reinforcing because they're running society right now and uh, that just happens to mean that they're the smartest people and so what a happy coincidence and so they talk to lawyers they talk to doctors they talk to other people working in Silicon Valley they um, talk to financiers these financiers working on complex financial instruments like derivatives and swaps and uh, you know dealing with things that meager working class people who might work at the mill or work at a coal mine or they might be a mechanic or a plumber but they're not highly versed in the sophistication of a complex integrated global economy um, and so it's a good thing that the liberals are running the world and not the common folk or the working class and this just happens to be uh, the same thing that the founding fathers believed or at least some of them if you read Federalist Papers and you read what um, Madison and Hamilton had to say about what the structure of the Senate should be. They said it should be uh, kind of an aristocratic class of the smartest people, um, not that, that don't succumb to the ignorant, troublesome, meddlesome, uh, hasty views of, um, you know, of the, of the population. That's, you know, just gonna try to take, take away their wealth and, and, and do things that are not good for society. They know it's good for society. They happen to be the minority. Um, uh, but they're, they're, they're doing what's best for everybody. So if you look at the practical results of this uh, self-described, self-proclaimed, educated elite um, of professional managerial people making complex decisions about a complex world, um, what you actually get is um, a self-perpetuating class doing extremely stupid and overly complex fixes, which actually don't really do anything. Um, to problems which fundamentally are either class-based and uh, which are oftentimes class-based and uh, pretty clear if you you know had an old school understanding of how the world worked like the Democratic Party in the 1930s was a party of the working class and they, they viewed politics through this lens and it made things a lot more clear than if you're viewing everything as a 50 page um, academic paper on health care or whatever it is. So if you look at health care, uh, when Obama comes into office, um, it's time to reform health care. What is he what is he what does he suggest doing? Does he suggest doing what uh, you know the rest of the world has done, every other industrialized country and making it uh, government run, um, Medicare up for all type single payer system, um, what Harry Truman recommended, what uh, Lyndon Johnson was trying to get passed when he first passed Medicare. Um, and was the, the democratic ideal for a long time. No, we're not going to do that because we understand, we the liberals, we the educated liberals that are not going to succumb to the old constituency of, um, you know, uneducated working class people who say, who say things like, I just want health care so that I can survive. Like those people don't understand about the HMO market. They don't understand um, about the, you know, the, the nuances of uh, trade and globalization and also, you know, the cost to businesses and all these different things. Like we're the ones that are going to do it the right way, whether you like it or not. And so Obama comes in. He has a super majority. He has 60 senators on his side. He has an entire movement on his side. And he decides the first thing he wants to do, or one of the first things, and what he wants to spend his entire political capital on is health care reform. But he's going to do it. He's not going to do it the old-fashioned way. He's not going to do it the way of 
taking on the healthcare industry for the benefit of the people, he's smarter. And also, he's surrounded by, and his class of people at, at Harvard, at Yale, or Columbia, I forget which schools he went to, um, these are the people that are, are running the world now. And they have high positions in the corporations that, that need to be... Uh, that need to be leveraged and so rather than you know taking on the pharmaceutical companies which are charging the world or the u.s more than any other country in the world for the same prescription drugs even though they're manufactured here um even though you know you could enforce existing antitrust laws and um you know take them on meaningfully what obama decides to do is um uh, you know, he's going to make a deal with them so that they can support his health care bill so he can get it passed. And so what he's going to do is give them a, a carrot. So the carrot is um, uh, he's going to ban drug reimportation from Canada. So we're not allowed to import drugs from Canada. So you can get an EpiPen in Canada at a fraction, a, a small fraction of the price of one in the U.S., and they're probably both manufactured here. Um, uh, but uh, those, those ones from Canada can't come back in. And so then that way... We have a sort of anti-free trade monopoly um, on on prescription drugs, and it's funny because these are the people that have been proclaiming the virtues of free trade and the free market and and capitalism for the longest time. But when push comes to shove and policy needs to be implemented, they implement protectionist measures that just happen to benefit the class of people um, who they come from and who they claim to be taking on, but they understand how complex the world is and it's not black and like, white like that. So sometimes you need to break a few eggs to make an omelet and you need to, to act in a, in a complex way. And so instead of a simple fix to the healthcare system, which every other country somehow managed to do, uh, we have the most complex healthcare system in the world. It was the most complex in the world before Obama and then Obamacare, improved it marginally by getting rid of pre-existing conditions and getting more people health care and making it so that uh, you know children could stay on the their their families employers health care until they're 26 um, these are all minor reforms around the edges and these are the things that the liberal class specialize in because they, they specialize in understanding all the different nuances and ways that they can smart their way in uh, little wins because that's how you know complex government is and that's how, that's how you win um, but in reality, if you had a class-based an analysis that was willing to take on the special interests, then that's what would have been done. And there's a lot of other examples like that. And so, um, and so the actual first thing that Obama did when he came into the office was, uh, remember, there was a huge financial crash. And so that sweeps Obama into office, as well as contempt for Bush, um, with a historic election. He has millions and millions of supporters. He has 13 million people on his mailing list, and he has hundreds of thousands of dedicated volunteers going out there, knocking on doors, working hard to make change in this country. Hope and change. What is his message? He's going to bring hope and change. It's not going to be the same old, same old. So he gets into office, and the first thing he does is he says to all the people supporting him, thank you for the help. You can go home now. I've got it from here. And he reappoints the people from the Clinton administration and from the liberal institutions, the financial elite uh, that um, have always been in power, at least for the Democratic Party since the 1990s and, and largely since the 1970s, um, because these are the smart people. Larry Summers, you know, was the president at Harvard. You know, he makes millions of dollars. He understands how Wall Street actually works. He can deal with the bankers. Um, same with Tim Geithner. Same with Rob Rubin. Like these are these are the type of highly educated, smart guys that we need to fix the system. And so rather than, you know, the mass of people who want, uh, you know, Wall Street to actually pay for the crimes that they did in terms of simple solution, overly simple solutions that don't understand the nuance of a, of a complex world, like breaking up the banks, like you can just break up a bank. That's exactly what uh, the, the Glass-Steagall did in the, 19, in the 1930s as it separated uh, investment banks from personal banks, from, from regular depositor banks, so that they couldn't gamble with your money and over leverage it, like 25 to 1 or whatever it was, um, So that on risky investments, which pay off a lot when they go well, but when they don't go well, uh, then they lose a ton of money. And it, and it creates incentives for them to do things like, uh, you know, give loans to the to people that they know they shouldn't because they're going to default because but those people pay the highest interest rates and so they can make the most money at least on paper and that's incentivized by 
getting rid of Glass-Steagall as Clinton did um, and deregulating the financial markets. And the people that happen to deregulate the financial markets are the people that Obama just put back in to regulate the financial markets in terms of uh, Summers and the other people that um, just happen to be from the smart, educated classes. And so the simple solution of uh, breaking up the banks and regulating them so that they can't hurt people um, in ways uh, just like we did before and the Democrats used to support is no longer feasible because the smart people know that there are better solutions to this and that they include things like thousands of page long uh, Dodd-Frank bills which uh, do a hundred different things um, but I don't really even know what they do, they do and I follow it all the time and uh, most people don't understand what they do but the people that write it knew what they do and the people that wrote it happen to be corporate lobbyists because those are the people from the same classes that the Democrats primary constituent comes from um, and so break up the banks too simple thousands of pages of a non-solution is the actual solution and I guarantee there's gonna be another crash um, regulating you know healthcare companies uh, in an extremely complex way um, that keeps us paying the highest amount of money in the world for health care um, keeps the private insurers in pl place keeps 28 or whatever it is 28 million people off of health insurance and tens of millions of others underinsured with high co-payments and deductibles um, keeps that in place in order for a technocratic minor fix around the edges uh, because you know this is just what smart people do rather than implementing a simple solution of single-payer government-run health care like every other country did and like the public actually was supportive of and still is supportive of over 60 percent support Medicare for all this isn't something the Democrats can do anymore because we the Democrats are the smart ones running the world that aren't going to be influenced by the troublesome dummies in the population. Um, that's what I think about that.